Good morning, everyone. You're watching Barnstable this morning. A report entitled An Analysis of Substance Abuse on Cape Cod, a baseline assessment was released recently. To talk with me about that today from the Barnstable County Human Services, I welcome Director Beth Albert. Good morning, Good Beth. morning. And uh, Senior Project Manager Vera Harik. Vera, welcome and thank you so thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Good morning. In. So uh, substance abuse, of course, a uh, major issue on Cape Cod right now. Uh, so many people talking about it, and it, it certainly is something that, that does require <clears throat> some attention. The Barnesville County Regional Substance Abuse Council was formed last year, and Beth, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that council, why it was formed, and, and sure. who makes it up. Okay, sure. So, um, so the county and its, you know, in the Department of Human Services, we have a Health and Human Service Advisory Council, and I had been approached by several members of that council, um, really seeking some support from the county to uh, provide a leadership role and, and create some type of regional um, approach to addressing the issue because it was impacting. It is impacting so many uh, so many people and so many agencies on the Cape. And so last uh, January we convened a 35 member council. We invited uh, representatives from all the 15 towns. We have all the key um, providers, healthcare system, Cape Cod Healthcare, um, law enforcement. Um, we have uh, different groups that are working in the area of substance abuse coming together. So it's, it's a council of 35. We also have participation from elected officials um, Council of 35, we've been meeting monthly. We had some uh, work to do up front, kind of bringing people up to speed about looking at this issue from a public health framework, and that's something that is reflected in the report and in the work that Vera is, has done, completed. Um, and so the Council is looking at the problem as a public health approach, from a pu public health approach, um, and are f uh, following a very uh, uh, a strategic um, planning effort, uh, mm -hmm. and this is our baseline for that, which is a baseline assessment, which is looking at the, um, uh, the epidemiological, and uh, we, do, we did a cost analysis, as well as we did an environmental scan, looking at what's already out in the community. Indeed, and then looking just looking through the members of the of the substance abuse council, mm -hmm. it's people who mostly are working in the field of healthcare or human services, uh, really who who have a a knowledge of the problem and then what's going on. Right, and then and then and then uh, also folks from the towns. We invited a representative from each of the towns because the you know the towns are impacted, and so we have participation from quite a few of the towns. Absolutely. So as we explore the issue, of course, it's very important to take a look at and to study what is going on. And I would assume that was kind of the, the, the onus behind, uh, you know, creating this, this report, this analysis. Right. Yeah. So um, the very first step in, the, in a planning process when you're looking at a problem of this magnitude and that affects so many sectors is you really need to do your due diligence and follow a process. So we're calling, uh, following something called the Strategic Prevention Framework. The baseline assessment is the first step in that, um, looking at what, what the consequences of substance abuse are, looking at the consumption of substance abuse, and not just focusing on one substance, but looking across at all of the different mm. substances being abused. Indeed. So let's talk a little bit about this this report itself. Uh, obviously, we're just looking at a, at a snapshot of this report mm -hmm. right now. Um, uh, Vera, maybe you can answer this. Is tell me sure. how the research was <coughs> conducted. Sure. Uh, just uh, just to back up one step, we we want to make sure that that people know that we're we're dealing with this on a regional as a regional problem, and as a, as a public health problem, as we should. And it's not that we have chosen to do this. This is the way in which a uh, a problem of this nature should be analyzed um, in order to provide baseline information and then do planning from there. From the federal government on down, the strategic planning framework is what's recommended. So that's what we've done. So that links into a sort of the, a national recognized system for how to go about this. Our, our methods for, for this report was it's a baseline assessment. So we, we, um, we took data from uh, both primary and secondary sources. The primary sources were interviews with key informants uh, Cape-wide who, who, have, um, who have an interest and are working in this, in this sector of substance abuse, uh, as well as review of uh, state level and, and national level uh, data th as, uh, as it pertains to our local situation. We've brought all of the, the state and national numbers that you see commonly down to the local level for, you know, to, to engender a, a really sort of hands-on understanding locally amongst not only decision makers but also people you know, people who are watching this so th those are those are our methods um, we have done 
we've taken a, a look at the epidemiology, which means sort of what's the scope and impact of the problem um, from a numbers and person point of view, as well as uh, we've looked at the costs mm. of of this, uh, how the costs are impacting our community and what we're what we're spending, both from the usual sources you would uh, you would think of, like treatment and recovery. Uh, to the, the, uh, the sources that maybe sometimes aren't necessarily thought of, but are also paying money in, in dealing with this problem. And so $110 million annually, yes. let's, let's talk about that cost, because yes. that is a, a large number. It's a uh, large it's, number. It's, it's a big impact on our community, just financially. It is. And it's, what's interesting about that also is that upwards of 80, 70 to 80 percent of that is public funds. You know, our tax dollars are being funneled in one way or another to address this problem, whether it's from treatment, uh, paying for treatment, or from law enforcement, courts, house of corrections, probation. W we're all paying for this one way or another. Or we, can, we can defer it and keep paying it in the way we are, or we can move farther upstream and address the problem on a more preventive level. Because of that $110 million, which is our estimate, less than 1% of that amount, about a million dollars, mm -hmm. Is, is what's being spent on prevention wow. of and the problem, yeah. First issue. Second issue, we have, we have uh, our findings with regard to alcohol are as impactful and as interesting as our findings are with regard to heroin and, and prescription opioids abuse. The, uh, the impact, uh, and we've done the costing and the epidemiology looking at both of those factors, because we don't want it forgotten that alcohol is a large, costly uh, endemic problem. And for endemic in a public health sense means it's a pervasive and persisting problem that kind of grinds on mm -hmm. year after year. The heroin opioid problem, <laughs> you can stop me anytime. No, well, well, <laughs> I, 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 that's the, that was kind of the direction that I wanted to take it in, is talking okay. a little bit about, um, you know, I think we hear so much these days about the heroin, the opiate, yes. the prescription pills, and it's almost like we, we forget about the, the elephant in the room, which is the, the mm -hmm. alcohol Correct. issues on the Cape. And I think that everyone knows at least one person who suffers from, you know, issues related to certainly. alcohol dependency. And so I think that that's something that is so pervasive, and it's certainly part of the conversation yeah. and part of the expense. There's no question. Um, our heroin prescription pills issue is clearly a, an epidemic problem. It means it is a, it's an emergency. The rates of increase in, in deaths are, are go, the rate of increases is, is increasing itself year over year. More and more people tend to die from this uh, you know, since at least uh, 2012. So this is a problem that's really ga garnered headline attention and, and rightfully so. Um, and so it has its interventions and people are focused on it, which is terrific. But we wouldn't have done our job if we had not c had a, you know, taken a complete scan mm. of the substance abuse problem, and which is why we're also highlighting the alcohol findings. Absolutely. And, and so it, when, another interesting thing that I, that I found as I was reading kind of the summary of this study was that, you know, data on, if we're going to talk about the opiates and the prescription, that, mm -hmm. that data is still kind of coming forth yes. because it's, it's this, this, at least the spike in deaths and the spike in overdoses is relatively, it's a relatively new player in, in the substance abuse game here on the Cape. Yes. But, you know, our findings, stop, if you want to jump yeah, them. Um, no, wait. Keep going. <laughs> the prescription opioids, uh, prescription pills and the prescribing practices has, has been focused on nationally and, and statewide in the last two years, maybe two or three years. And they've done a good job doing that. So therefore, they're clamping down on the availability, street level availability, or they're trying for prescription opioids. What that's done is that's forced people over to the heroin side of the equation if they're interested or unable to stop mm -hmm. using. On the heroin side of the equation, you have very dangerous product that's on the street because, the, because of the, it's being cut with fentanyl. I understand, I'm not a microbiologist, but, it, and that is, that is the problem. Well, you're seeing a spike in, um, you're seeing a spike in these deaths, overdose deaths, and, and that is involved. I, mm. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a law enforcement official. So, but it suffice it to say that that is where they find the the genesis of that problem and this spike in mortality. 
Indeed. I yeah. um, want to talk just briefly about the numbers just to get that out there and then uh, kind of talk about how we're going to use this information right. moving forward. Um, you know, looking at some of the data, of course, we said the alcohol is the worst at just about 7.9 percent of the population is estimated to be dependent on alcohol. Yeah, I wouldn't say worst. Worst is, you know, because we don't want to it's not a zero-sum mm. thing. We have a problem that is a, it's pro you know, among our most serious social problems right now, locally and, and statewide. The number, the raw number of people addicted to alcohol we found was about 17,000 people. It's pretty significant. On the Cape, that's a lot of people. It's, it's about 7.98 percent, you know, if you round it. There's 215, give or take, 215,000 people on the Cape. So that, that's, you know, you do the math, it's pretty easy. The uh, people uh, who are using other drugs mm -hmm. or abusing other drugs, you know, works out to between uh, between the uh, opioids and all the other drugs works out to about six point two percent. Wow. Wow. So, so certainly those numbers. So, so let's talk about moving forward about some sure. of the recommendations. I think obviously this is a, certainly a problem that you're not going to have that magic bullet solution. Right. You know, it, it affects so many different people in so many different ways and it can be a very personal uh, thing whether, whether stopping people from starting in the first place or getting people over the hump and getting them in, in recovery. So in looking at these numbers and looking at the data, what are some of the preliminary ideas for solutions and, and kind of ways you need to target that? All right. So we did this a, a series of recommendations um, for consideration, uh, so they're preliminary uh, recommendations, but the very first thing we need to do, um, in which we've started, again, a baseline report, this is kind of getting us started. The next step is we're going to be doing a series of um, uh, engaging the community a little bit more, um, and then ultimately what we hope to have, what we're planning on having, is, 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 is a regional plan that looks at, um, basically, is, it's a blueprint for the community uh, on What's, what, what can we support that's currently happening? What else do we need to um, target resources for? And how can we better coordinate re, uh, regional efforts? So um, the, the end result of this will be a written plan. And we're really rolling up our sleeves and we're going to be starting to work on that in the next couple weeks um, through the next couple months. And then from there, then, of course, then we move to implementation. But, you know, we've already seen some success in kind of pulling together and organizing as a region. We were able to apply for and um, were funded for a, a state grant around opioid abuse prevention. Mm. So we're already seeing some results and some um, positive outcomes of our efforts to, to look at this as a regional problem and, and, and organize mm -hmm. around that. Great. Very uh, an additional uh, uh, feature, important feature of the Regional Substance Abuse Council is that it provides a structure for funders to look at and say, all right, we're going to fund you to work on this. Mm. And, the, and the report that we've generated gives us that baseline, it almost a, you know, a, a rock hard foundation from which to write for funding. Right. We've got the numbers in place, we know where our problems are, we know, that we know the cost and the epidemiology, so that really sets us up to attract funding for the solutions that the RSAC ad identifies. And that usually is such a, a big stumbling block is finding yes. funding to get right. these things implemented. And I think with, with this kind of a problem, it's, it's imperative that solutions uh, get going. So yes. if people want to look at this report, I know it is online. Right. Uh, where can they go to find that? So both the executive summary and the full report are online uh, at our Barnesville County um, Department of Human Services website, which is bchumanservices.net. So it's bchumanservices.net. Great. Well, Beth, Vera, thank you so much for coming in and joining me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, my guest today talking about the analysis of substance abuse on Cape Cod from Barnesville County Human Services Director Beth Albert and Senior Project Manager Vera Harika. I'm Sarah Colvin.